So this is the second video I'm doing on recommended revision topics for the calculator papers for the maths GCSE exam 2019. Uh, if you didn't see the first part, go and have a look at that. I'll put a link down below and I'll pop a link up here as well. This is primarily focused on the Edexcel higher paper, but in fact there's plenty here that will be useful for all the exam boards and there's a good chunk of stuff that will be useful for the foundation paper too. So hopefully a little bit of something that will be of use for everybody. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a bank of practice questions that relate to everything that I do in this video on my website, which is mathskitchen.com. Um, all of these practice questions are free and it's interactive. You type in your answer and it will show you whether you've got it correct or not and show you a model answer if you're stuck or if you got it wrong. Um, so that's mathskitchen.com to get over there to do a bit of practice revision. As with the first video, these are not predicted topics. I don't know what's going to be in the exam, but these are things that are highly likely to come up and things that really the examiners will be wanting to test you on. So if you need a bit of focus, if you're just looking for, oh, what should I revise for the next exam? This is a very good place to start, I would say. Without further ado then, here are the topics that I'm going to be looking at. Circle theorems, histograms, laws of indices and error intervals. Now, actually, they are not all specifically calculator questions, are they? But they do often seem to appear in a calculator paper, and they didn't appear in that first higher at Excel non-calculator paper. So there's a good chance they're going to appear in either paper two or paper three. That's why I've included them in this calculator-based video. So the first one, circle theorems, I'm not going to go into great detail on that. I've done a very quick four-minute video that outlines all of the theorems, and in fact everything you need to know to do with the theorems. Uh, I'll put a link to that here. And I've also got a longer video where I go into more detail with the explanations and do some example questions and that sort of thing. So any problems with circle theorems, go and check out either one of those videos. Uh, the only thing I would say is that they often seem to ask questions that relate to understanding tangents and tangents of a circle. So you will need to know that the radius meets a tangent at a right angle and that two tangents meeting at a point will be of equal length. So those two seem to come up quite a lot, but worth knowing all of the circle theorems. Next up is histograms, and here's what a histogram looks like. This is an example of a histogram question. They could obviously ask you these in different ways, but often what they want to test is that, do you understand how to find the frequency from a histogram? And to find the frequency, you have to find the area of each bar. So that is the big thing that you need to remember with histograms. To find the frequency, you multiply the width by the height. In other words, you find the area of each bar. Next up is laws of indices, and this is one of the ones that really it could just as easily have been in the non-calculator paper, but it didn't seem to come up. And I'm talking about questions of this form, where you need to understand that when you are multiplying numbers together, the index numbers just get added. Okay, so reasonably straightforward. It's just kind of remembering those rules, isn't it? So that is it, laws of indices. Error intervals is the next thing. And to be able to do these, you need to understand the notation that we use to describe inequalities. You know, those less than or greater than or greater than or equal to, you know, all those symbols. You need to be familiar with those and you need to have an understanding of bounds. So for example, let's say we have measured something and we've rounded off the answer to the nearest meter and it is seven meters long. To describe the error interval, we need to be able to work out what was the smallest length that it could have been so that we would still round it up to seven and what's the longest possible length that it could have been so that we would still have rounded it down to seven. So the lower bound will be 6.5 because anything below 6.5 we would have rounded that off to 6. And the upper bound is 7.5 because as soon as you hit 7.5 you would round that up to 8. So it can't actually be 7.5 but anything up to 7.5. So that's the first thing you need to know. And so how do we write that in our answer? Well the smallest measurement could have been 6.5 or bigger. So we would say 6.5 is less than or equal to n. I'm just using n here, but 
you know, it could be any letter, but the n must be less than 7.5. It can't actually include 7.5, so it must be less than 7.5. And you write your answer like that. So that's error intervals. So those are my second recommended revision topics. If you didn't see the first one, as I say, go and check that out. The link is down below. I will be back to do another one after you've done paper two. So I'll be coming up with a list of things to revise for paper three. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to go to mathskitchen.com to do some practice questions there and just generally keep practicing, keep working hard, keep revising. Good luck for paper two uh, and I'll see you back here afterwards uh, to get you ready for paper three.